Thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, states around the country moving to outlaw abortion or protect it. And a new poll shows where the public stands on banning abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. As the war rages on against Ukraine, it is also hitting home here in the United States, driving up the already high price of new and used cars even higher. Plus, Ohio's gubernatorial race. It's a competitive campaign that's dividing the Buckeye State's Republican Party. I do believe that in Ohio, we're not a Republican state, we're a Trump state. See why some candidates are eyeing a more traditional Republican vote, while others are counting on support for a Trump style of Republicanism. Then later, Angel Studios is on a mission to amplify stories of light. But Disney nearly turned out the lights on this growing media platform. I was terrified when I first saw the lawsuit. I remember standing up and, and saying to people, um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to turn out. We have an inside look this at this David CBN and Goliath News battle. Watch. All these stories and more. I want to begin with major stories on abortion from around the country, beginning in Washington, D.C., where a pro-life activist has been in the news for the last week after authorities recovered the bodies of five unborn babies from inside her apartment. But there are still a wide range of questions in the story involving the 28-year-old 28, 28 Lauren Handy. She's been arrested and charged, not for the bodies, but for a different issue involving blocking access to an abortion clinic during a protest in 2020. D.C. police are still investigating the case involving the bodies of the aborted babies. You can find details and analysis on this story at CBNNews.com. It comes as more states are writing new laws on abortion. In Oklahoma, GOP Governor Kevin Stitt is expected to sign a bill approved by the Republican-controlled House Tuesday that would make performing an abortion a crime. This bill criminalizes abortion, makes it a felony, uh, for the doctor, the penalty is up to 10 years in prison and up to a $100,000 fine. That came a day after Colorado Governor Jared Polis signed a measure putting the right to an abortion into state statute. It permits abortion for any reason and bans local governments from imposing their own restrictions. States are taking action both to restrict or protect abortion as the Supreme Court considers Mississippi's law, which would ban abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. A Wall Street Journal poll last week found 48 percent of Americans favor a 15-week ban, while 43 percent oppose it. Turning now to the war in Europe, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made a desperate plea to the United Nations Security Council to act Tuesday as the Kremlin calls images of dead civilians out of Bucha a hoax. The U.S. now stepping in with tougher sanctions against Russia. Charlene Aaron has the story. Speaking to the U.N. Security Council Tuesday, President Zelensky called on the body to hold Russia accountable for war crimes as he laid out the atrocities committed by Russian forces in the town of Bucha. They were killed in their apartments, houses, blowing up grenades. The civilians were crushed by tanks while sitting in the, their cars in the middle of the road, just for their pleasure. He also urged reform at the UN by kicking Russia out of the Security Council and removing its veto power. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to close the UN? Do you think that the time of international law is gone? If your answer is no, then you need to act immediately. The UN uh, charter must be restored immediately. The UN system must be reformed immediately. While the Russians are calling the images out of Bucha fake, more images and testimonies of survivors are coming out every day. The victims include innocent men, women, and children, some apparently tied up, tortured, and shot at close range. This man says men younger than 50 were lined up and shot on the spot. He survived because he's 53. What we've seen in, uh, in Bucha is not the random act of a rogue unit. It's a deliberate campaign uh, to kill to torture, uh, to rape, uh, to commit atrocities. Uh, the reports are more than credible. The evidence is there for the, uh, the world to see. President Biden and European leaders are set to announce more sanctions against Russian government officials and their family members. The European Union reportedly proposing sanctions directly against Vladimir Putin's two daughters. 
The U.S. is also sending an additional $100 million in security assistance to Ukraine, helping its military secure more Javelin anti-armor systems. Meanwhile, Russian forces continue to deploy to the south and east. Human rights groups say the situation in the besieged city of Mariupol is desperate, and the atrocities there are likely much worse. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Ukrainian citizens are fleeing their country, most headed to Poland. And at the border crossing into that country, they're finding hot food, warm blankets, and a place to rest. It's all thanks to Operation Blessing. We are here in Medica, one of the most active border crossing in Poland, helping Ukrainian refugees. They cross all day and all night. It gets very cold, and most of them don't have the proper clothes to protect them from the weather conditions. For more than a week, we'd had a food truck and a grill to prepare hot dogs, hamburgers, and quesadillas, as well as hot drinks. It's been very popular since a warm meal isn't always available for those who are crossing. We also provide a warm tent where refugees can rest, recharge their batteries, kids can be kids, and where we do our best to make them feel like home. Also, we had a large amount of blankets and coats that we handed out. This was a great moment to see the needs of the people that we are helping and get closer to them. Thank you. You can help Operation Blessings disaster relief efforts by calling 1-800-700-7000. Let us know that you want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. You can also write us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia 23463. Note in the memo line of your check, Disaster Relief Fund. And you can text us, simply text OB Crisis to 71777 and visit our websites as well, cbn.com and ob.org. Anything you're able to do is greatly needed and appreciated. The ripple effect from the war in Ukraine is hitting the global auto industry and consumers are paying the price. The cost of new and used cars already sky high due to COVID now expected to climb even higher as the war limits materials and strains the supply chain. Brody Carter is on this story. This rising cost chain reaction created by COVID is now exacerbated by the war in Europe. Slow car production and a semiconductor shortage means limited inventory. And while your current ride is likely worth more, you could be in for a rude awakening when you have to get a new one. For more than a year, the global auto industry has struggled with COVID-related production and supply chain issues, ranging from a shortage in microchips to delayed delivery. The war in Ukraine threatens to magnify the problem and prices. We're very sensitive because we have no inventory anywhere in the chain because of the, the comeback from COVID and everything being so tight that any bump in the road becomes a real disruption of production, um, either a disruption of production or a vastly <laughs> uh, um, unplanned for cost increase. For instance, electric wiring made in Ukraine, critical to the car industry, is now much more difficult to get. Critical Russian exports could also be cut off due to sanctions. Because you only need to miss one part to not be able to make a car. That's led to production stoppages and slowdowns at factories in Europe. And analysts say it could be headed our way next. Industry analysts are lowering global production estimates by 2 to 3 million cars a year in 2022 and 2023. For the consumer, it means higher prices, not just for new cars, but used as well. Before COVID, the average used car price was about $17,000 post-COVID or at the end of hopefully we're at post-COVID is about $30,000. Sticker shock is spreading among used car buyers hoping for a bargain. Three-year-old vehicles taking the biggest jump at almost 40 percent. Edmonds researchers pointing out the Dodge minivan and Porsche Cayenne is leading the pack. Families are paying nearly double the listed price from last year. Get huge savings on over 800 new Nissan. Dan Bannister, president of Bannister Automotive in Virginia and Maryland, says... Well, now is a good time to sell your car. You'll pay more to replace it. On the bright side, you're likely to a higher trade-in value to help with the price difference. The used car prices have gone up, and so have the new car prices. So, you know, you don't have the, the rebates and incentives that uh, the manufacturer putting on the cars previously because they don't have to. Like, you know, some of the cars that might have a $2,000 rebate or a $5,000 rebate, you're not seeing any of those anymore. You know, when you come in, you're, you know, what's listed on the window, that's probably what you're going to pay. More than 80% of car buyers paid more than the sticker price for new vehicles in January. Compare that to last year's 3%. But if you have the, the prices that go up and the interest rates go up, then we're, we're talking about a different story. That's already happening. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the first time since 2018. 
with more hikes ahead in the coming months to cool inflation. This all leaves the future of car prices a bit uncertain. In my opinion, I don't think it's going to be overnight drop, but I think eventually those used car prices are going to go down, which is going to probably offset the increase in the interest rates. Yeah, the, the prices just are ridiculous, but what are we supposed to do? Other considerations include record-breaking gas prices, and car insurance could also be on the way up as all state has gotten the okay from 13 states to raise its rates. Brody Carter, CBN News. Coming up, a political divide among the Republican Party in Ohio will share how this state's political race could affect this year's midterm election. Stay with us. One GOP candidate for governor of Ohio says that he is not a Rep it's not a Republican state, but a Trump state. This is a growing trend in races across the country where Republican incumbents are facing primary challenges from within their own party. This could also be a sign of where the party is headed. Heather Sells reports on the GOP gubernatorial race in the Buckeye state. Governor Mike DeWine is running for re-election, but standing in his way, a wave of challengers closely aligned with former President Trump. It is an inter-party battle that mimics the divide in the national GOP. Mike DeWine has served Ohio as a U.S. congressman, senator, and now governor. He sat down with CBN News to talk about his re-election bid and one of the highlights of the last year. Well, it was a great victory uh, to get Intel here. In December, chipmaker Intel announced a $20 billion complex near Columbus, the state's biggest economic development package ever. DeWine says it sends a signal. If you're thinking about moving or you're thinking about expanding, you, you need to look at Ohio. As of last month, DeWine also had big money, $9 million in the bank to appeal to voters before the May 3rd primary and beyond. Right now, he's well ahead in the polls with 34 and even 40 percent, giving him up to an 18-point lead over his challengers, former Congressman Jim Renacci and farmer Joe Blystone. People are tired. They're looking for somebody on the outside. I see a state in Ohio that is um, not does not have strong leadership. Despite trailing DeWine in fundraising and the polls, Renacci and Blystone see an opening. They're counting on primary voters who identify more with Trump-style republicanism, and they're hoping for a Trump endorsement. I do believe that in Ohio, we're not a Republican state, we're a Trump state. And one thing I'll, I'll say forcefully, uh, President Trump is still my president. Uh, I don't think uh, Biden won uh, this uh, past uh, 2020 election. DeWine says he'd welcome a Trump endorsement, even though he's not been afraid to call him out. On January 7th, after the Capitol riots, DeWine went after the president. This incendiary speech yesterday that he gave to the protesters served only to fan those flames. Renacci has targeted DeWine for that, while both he and Blystone are attacking the governor's COVID policies. Ohio was the first state to cancel a large event and close schools, and DeWine has faced criticism for closing businesses and his mask orders. We're tired of the mask mandates that this governor was pushing. Blystone, who farms and owns a restaurant, says the governor's orders forced him to close for eight weeks. My employees rely on me to uh, receive a paycheck so they can take care of their families. And, and, and when we have to shut down and we can't, we can't carry them through, that bothers me uh, a lot. These three candidates do share similar views on Republican priorities, be it the economy, schools, immigration, abortion, or gun laws. And they're very aware that in these polarized times, politics, as usual, will not suffice when it comes to governing. It used to be, at, at least if you were right or left or middle, we could at least sit down and have a cup of coffee and have a conversation. Well, I have friends on both sides of the aisle, but I also believe that friendship means that you have to have the ability 
to be able to talk and work in a civil manner. And, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can get back to that. DeWine, despite tangling with Trump, says it's time to look forward. I think it's important uh, for us to focus on the 20. 22 race. He's also upbeat about bringing the country back together. We're a resilient people. We're strong people. So, you know, we're going to be okay. Uh, we just have to continue to remind ourselves that, you know, what pulls us together as a, as a people um, is much, much more than what, what divides us. How the candidates position themselves in relation to the former president could mean everything in this race with the stakes especially high in this battleground state. Reporting in Columbus, Heather Sell, CBN News. Still ahead, we're sitting down with the founders of Angel Studios as they talk about their David and Goliath fight that nearly killed the family business. Stay with us. Welcome back to CBN Newswatch. Angel Studios' mission is to amplify stories of light. The studio's first projects, The Chosen and Dry Bar Comedy, have earned billions of views around the world, and there are even bigger projects in the works. But it has not been easy. For a closer look, let's head to Provo, Utah. Angel Studios is the production house behind The Chosen, the first multi-season series about the life of Christ and one of the largest crowdfunded entertainment projects in history. And he was cold, and he was crying, and he needed my help. Angel Studios is also home to the highly successful Dry Bar Comedy Stage, where we're sitting down with the Harmon brothers to look back at the David and Goliath fight that nearly crushed their family business. VidAngel, the streaming platform that allowed viewers to skip or mute what they didn't want to see. When we last sat here some five years ago, you were faced with a lawsuit. Let's go back to that time. What, what was it like? What do you remember? Well, at the time, I was terrified when I first saw the lawsuit and shocked that it was Disney. But I, I remember distinctly getting in, up in front of how many people did we have at that time? Probably, I don't know how many, it was around 50 people on the team, 40 to 50. I remember standing up and, and saying to people, um, I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna turn out, but I believe that the audience, we, and Hollywood would be better off for it. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like, um, we came this close to dying over and over again. Like when we were trying to help the Chosen get off the ground, there was a time when we had a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank right before Drybar took off. And, um, and we were under Disney's lawsuit, spending so much money, trying to get revenue streams back up, betting the entire farm on the Chosen. And, um, it, being weeks away from completely yeah, out of money. Yeah, weeks away from being out of money. In light of all that you were facing, why did you feel you weren't going to go under and you weren't going to lose? There were several, like, near-death moments for this company that, at those moments, I remember thinking, I will fight like this is going to make it. Mm. But I don't personally believe it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep pushing because God can do something with this if He wants to. When we were in trial, the number two guy at Disney was there the entire week, and their half of the room was filled with suits of sophisticated lawyers and people and people watching. And our half of the room was a measly crowd. And then one, the families would come in and sit down and cheer for us. And then they'd have to leave, or children would come and Little cheer Orthodox for us. Little Orthodox Jewish families would come in and <laughs> sit down and be like. You can do it, you can do it. And so it's like this sea of high billing hours against, you know, the, 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 uh, the margins of, of, of Hollywood society. How and, and why did you survive? We should have, we should have lost. We, we, we really should have. And, um, but we didn't. And we can't take credit for that. It, it was a mixture of 
of families like those stepping up and putting up $10 million for us to fight the battle. And as far as I'm aware, we're the only company that's ever survived, like a startup company that's ever survived a big lawsuit like this from Disney. So how are things different today? How big is Angel Studios? How many projects do you have? What's all happening here now? Leaving bankruptcy, we were at th somewhere in the 30 range, maybe 38 people. Today we're at over 140. When Disney sued us, we did $8 million. Last year we did 120. We got a bunch of projects coming. Um, we have two that are profitable right now that have launched. So we've got Drive Our Comedy and The Chosen. And then we've got, that just launched a few months ago, is Tuttle Twins. And there's a bunch coming down the pipe. And then we plan to do 300 shows or movies over the next five years. Pretty ambitious. For more good entertainment news, be sure to join us in Studio 5 tonight. Elevation Worship's Chris Brown will join us with their new album and a look back at the project that just earned them their first Grammy Award along with Maverick City Music's Dante Bo, who's also with us this week. And we have the good story behind the film, The Bad Guys. Will join us for that this evening on Studio 5. You can catch Studio 5 at 8.30 Eastern. Your Wednesday Word is coming up right after this. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is miracle. Know this, miracles are not impossible to God. They are routine. In fact, miracles are not just what God does. It's who he is. With that word, I encourage you to make this a wonderful Wednesday, and be sure to have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News. Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News channel at any time, as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us the address right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Again, make it a wonderful Wednesday and join us right back here, same time tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless.